Logitech took my favorite mouse and made it even better. So this is the new MX Master 4 and its biggest new trick, haptic feedback. They've kept that signature shape we all love, the buttons are still here and some of them have been repositioned for quicker access, but there is one change that I'm not a fan of. In the vastness of nature, every color tells a story. Matcha green, the color of renewal and fresh beginnings. I mean, take a hint. Hydrangea blue, the hue of tranquility and quiet reflections on how easy it is to work in. Snow white, the essence of purity and crisp air and having all the hair after the assembly. And black, the depth of mystery shadows, but no mystery to hardware compatibility. This isn't just a stunning ITX enclosure, it's a vibe to shape your mood. The TR100 by Thermotech, check it out below. My journey with tech started with the Logitech MX Performance Mouse. I still have this with me right now. Uh, it was my very first YouTube video. It was an unboxing and I still remember that day. I finished my last exam in grade 12, ran straight to Future Shop and spent $99 on it. Bless my mom for lending her credit card. But ever since then, I've upgraded with every generation. So it started with the Performance MX, and then I had the MX Master, and then I had the MX Master 2S, the Master 3, the Master 3S, and now the Master 4. It is their seventh generation of the MX series, and I've been dailying this for about a month now, so let's talk about what's new, what's better, and if these new haptics are a game changer or a gimmick. Well, first things first, what do you get inside the box? Well, the Master 4 now ships with a new USB-C bolt receiver, replacing the old USB-A version. And that's a welcoming change since most modern laptops and desktops feature USB-C ports. This new bolt receiver is also noticeably smaller than before, which is great because it blends in nicely with today's thinner profile laptops instead of sticking out like a sore thumb but you can also lose this easily. And I really wish that Logitech included a storage compartment inside the mouse, um, just cause that would have been a lot more convenient. But that said, in my experience with the Master 3S, the Bolt receiver pretty much stayed plugged into the back of my Mac Studio and I never had to touch it again. And if I ever needed to switch over to a Windows laptop or another MacBook, I would just simply switch over to the easy switch feature or Bluetooth, which worked flawlessly. So as long as you plan to leave the receiver plugged in, this isn't something that I would worry about. They've also skipped including the USB-C charging cable this time. Now, you can either be frustrated by that or not care at all. Personally, I fall into the second group because I almost never use the USB-C cables that come with my tech anyway, because I already have plenty of USB-C cables that I can reach. But Maybe this was a move that Logitech had to do in order to cut down on e-waste and reduce their carbon footprint, which is fair, but I can also see how this can be a headache if you're trying to set up a new workstation where you need to physically plug in the mouse uh, to charge or to pair it to a desktop. So yeah, let me know what your take is on this. It's safe to say that Logitech kind of pulled another apple here. The Master 4 comes in the same colorway as the previous Gen 3S. You get graphite, which is what I have over here. There's pale gray, which is really just white and an all black option. Design wise, the overall shape is pretty much the same. They've swapped the soft rubber material for a textured silicone surface that's meant to resist wear and tear over time. It does feel a bit plasticky, which honestly isn't a bad thing because this rubberized surface on my MX Master 3S it did not age well. I'm still having trouble cleaning this regularly. It picks up stain very quickly. And so, um, yeah, I'm just glad that they switched to something a lot more um, forgiving in terms of maintenance over time. So that's pretty nice. The key plates now feature a sleek translucent edge and the horizontal wheel is slightly longer than the Master 3S. It's no longer recessed, but instead it flows pretty well seamlessly with the edges of the Master 4. And it's still easy to get to with my thumb. You still get all the great features carried over from the Master 3S, like the signature max speed infinite scroll wheel, uh, the quieter left and right clicks, up to 70 days of battery life. And you also get the quick charge feature that gives you three hours of use from just one minute of charging. But here's what I'm not a fan of, the price. The Master 4 breaks tradition here. The MX Master Series has always lived in that sweet spot of around $99. And honestly, I would usually tell people to wait for a sale and they usually go for sales around Black Friday, around the holidays and back to school seasons. But this time it's $120 and it's even pricier in parts of Europe, probably due to tariffs. But either way, that price jump is a tough pill to swallow for MX users who are looking to upgrade. So if it's going to cost as much, it better have something special up its sleeve, right? Enter 
haptics. So how does it actually work? Well, there are two types of events on the Master 4. Let's start with the on-device events. When you turn on the mouse, it gives you feedback through little vibrations. A single tap means that it's connected. If it's still searching, it pulses like a heartbeat. And once it connects or if it finds or establishes a computer, it will give you that single confirmation tap again. And if the battery is running low, it'll notify you with another vibration. It's pretty cool. But the real magic happens with the second layer of haptics. And it starts with something called Actions Ring. It's located right where your thumb rests. On the previous generation Master 3S, this spot was the hidden gesture button, but now that's been moved um, towards the forward and backward buttons. Although I have to be honest, it's not an ideal spot. I found myself constantly triggering the forward button thinking that it's the gesture button. It's just too close, but perhaps I'll just need a little bit more time to get used to. But anyways, when you trigger the actions ring, a virtual overlay instantly pops up on your screen no matter where your cursor is. And you feel a subtle haptic click. It's not a physical button, but it just feels like one. It's actually very similar to the haptics uh, or the haptic trackpad that you get from a MacBook. Now the overlay shows a ring of customizable shortcuts. For example, I can play, pause my most recent media, even it includes my minimized YouTube video in the browser. I can also launch the Apple Notes app. I can lock my screen, open Logitech Options Plus software. Uh, I can also take a screenshot open finder and also it gives me the ability to launch the emoji library there are also even icons that instantly launch different ai tools like ChatGPT, perplexity gemini and microsoft copilot now as you hover over each icon the mouse gives you gentle haptic taps adding another satisfying layer of sensory feedback and confirmation these are just general options that come with action string but you can take it even further by remapping it to any command or a keyboard shortcut, or if you want to launch another application through the Options Plus software. You can configure that. I will go over that process very shortly. But the action string setup doesn't stop there. It goes even further by unlocking extra layers of functionality in apps like Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom. Now, I use Lightroom to edit all of my photos, and being able to trigger the action string, it just lets me quickly fine tune things like exposure highlights. Um, I can also dial things like my white levels, color temperature, tint, contrast, black levels and shadows, all by just simply turning the scroll wheel. And each turn adjusts values in precise one step increments. And you can actually see the changes update in real time within the app. And you can also see those values update as well. Now, what makes this even better is the feedback. As you cycle through different tools, you again get that subtle haptic confirmation. And when you make adjustments, the silent and well-defined scroll steps that come with the uh, MagSafe scroll wheel, it gives you another layer of satisfying sensory, which is just great. I honestly had a blast using this recently to edit uh, some photos uh, from my recent track day event. It's not distracting at all, but instead it sort of helps me stay focused on the adjustments and the exact look that I'm going for with the photos that I've shot. You can also use this feature in Adobe Photoshop, which I mean, the experience is very similar to Lightroom, gives you access to controls like brightness, uh, vibrance, contrast, exposure, hue and saturation. All of them are just adjustable on the fly with the scroll wheel and you still experience the haptics as you cycle between those tools. However, I did notice a small glitch. Every time when I tweak the brightness or contrast, it creates a new smart filter on a selected layer. So what should be a quick one to two minute adjustment session can end up cluttering your layer. It's just a long list at this point of those smart layers, which can also increase the overall file size. Now, this is an early beta software, so it's likely something that could be fixed with an update over the air, but it's worth keeping in mind that as of now, there are officially only two plugins that are supported uh, on this haptic sensory panel, and that's Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom. Now, Logitech has mentioned that they plan to open the SDK to developers, which could help expand their marketplace, because right now, if I look at their marketplace through Options Plus, there's only support for around 40 apps uh, for their existing products, including their Creative Console and their previous gen MX lineup, which isn't really a lot, but that means that there's still plenty of room for growth. Personally, 
I would have loved to see plugins or at least native plugins for applications like AutoCAD, Blender, and other STEM-based tools, hopefully sooner than later. Now, I assume that DaVinci Resolve Studio, which is the video editing app that I use, wouldn't really support haptics or the new actions ring, but it actually does, at least partially. It still feels a bit experimental, but I can still switch to full screen preview, add nodes, grab stills, and even uh, remap one of the controls to add a video or audio transitions. It's super handy. All I have to do is just highlight the clips, trigger the actions ring, and instantly apply a transition. But that said, a lot of the deeper features are still broken. I tried creating a custom setup for Resolve, like adding an audio leveler, where I can simply use the haptics and the scroll wheel to adjust the volume levels of each track. But it won't let me lower it. Uh, instead, it just keeps on going higher, and it also doesn't let me choose a default type of audio or video transition that I'd like to apply. The default is just cross dissolve. And according to Logitech, Resolve isn't officially supported through their marketplace, but Logi Options Plus still recognizes it and automatically creates its own profile, which I respect. So again, I just hope that this app gets recognition very soon. Speaking of Options Plus, this is honestly one of the best looking UIs to play around with. You're greeted with a clean bird's eye view of your mouse completed with expanding menus for each button, then you can remap to pretty much whatever you like. You can even see that your profiles automatically change as you cycle between different apps, which is super cool. I would say this is easily one of the best features of the MX Master Series. It's multifunctional and it just works. Now, if you wanna configure the actions ring per app, you can actually do that right over here within the interface. Just find the action that best fits your workflow and then just simply drag and drop it into an existing command. Uh, it'll just override the existing one and you can also undo it if you don't like it. For example, I created a command to open my main music library and sound effects folder, which is incredibly handy when I'm editing a video in DaVinci Resolve. I only have a single monitor and I need quick access to those assets instead of having to minimize all of my tabs or my applications and open up Finder and finding those directories. You can also add or create your own profiles for Actions Ring with a specific app and run macros, but that's going to be time consuming. And it's also not going to be as polished as the native integrations that Logitech and Adobe were able to implement with Lightroom and Photoshop. Now you can't import keyboard shortcut profiles for individual apps into Options Plus, but honestly, I'm not sure how useful that would be because if your muscle memory is already built around keyboard shortcuts, it would take a whole new learning curve to get used to the new Actions Ring and it might even slow you down. So. I see Actions Ring more as an extension of your existing shortcuts. If you don't have access to all of your commands at once on the keyboard, you know, it's nice to offload some of them towards the Actions Ring to sort of fill the gaps. The point and scroll tab gives you control over scroll speed, scroll direction, scroll force, pointer speed, and most importantly, the sensitivity of the haptic sense panel. Now, this is actually very important. It's the first thing that I tweaked right away because by default, it's set to medium and I kept accidentally triggering it and then it automatically randomly launched ChatGPT or the Apple's node, even though I did not intend to launch any of those applications. So setting it or switching it to the hard setting solved the issue and I still haven't been able to experience any of those triggers because you really got to put a little bit of pressure to be able to um, get that feedback. If you're still accidentally triggering it, just switch it over to the firm setting, which is the highest. Moving to the haptic feedback tab, you can modify the haptic intensity. Remember, this is different from the pressure sensitivity that I talked about earlier. You can also create smart actions, enable haptics when using the gesture button, or even feel those taps when you switch desktops using easy switch. And of course, you can configure that through Logitech Flow. I've already covered this in my previous MX reviews, but TLDR, it's a seamless cross computer control feature that lets you use one mouse and a keyboard across multiple devices. You can move your cursor between different screens, copy and paste text images and files from one computer to another. It's been awesome, especially when I'm switching between my Mac Studio, my MacBook Pro, and a Windows gaming laptop that I'm testing out. That whole seamless integration is pretty awesome. All I have to do is just install Options Plus on those three devices, make sure that they're all connected to the same network, and then, yeah, it's a seamless workflow. Now, the sensor hasn't changed from the Master 3S. It still offers the same 8K DPI support, which I personally don't use, but I was really hoping for an upgrade this year, maybe something a bit more precise, perhaps if they could find a way to decrease the 
just a subtle acceleration that you still experience with this mouse. Um, maybe a hybrid from their ultra tier gaming lineup from the let's say the Hero 2 sensor on their super light mice. But to be fair, I do have a separate mouse dedicated towards gaming and this isn't, I repeat, isn't meant to be a gaming mouse in the first place. My workflow involves, again, editing videos, creating thumbnails, doing some research, and of course, doing some Excel charting for benchmarks. Uh, and for that, this thing performs pretty flawlessly. It's reliable, which is really all you need for creative and productivity focused work. So yeah, the sensors haven't really changed. In fact, you can see how that translates to the power efficiency side with the Master 4, and that's with battery life. Even though it's using the same sensor, you're still getting the exact same 70 days of battery life. Speaking from my experience, I've had to only charge my Master 3S maybe once or twice a month, and that's with daily use over the past three years. So battery life was undeniably awesome on the Master 3S, and so I'm pretty sure it's gonna be pretty solid on the Master 4. I've been using this for about a month and it's right now sitting at around 50%, so I wouldn't worry about battery life too much. So MX Master users, if you're coming from the 2, 2S or 3, I would say the ergonomic refinements alone make the upgrade worth it. But if you're coming from the 3 or the 3S, it's a tough call. Hear me out. The new haptics feature is exciting, but right now, it only supports a couple of applications, which is a very, very small percentage of real world workflows. I wish there were plug and play haptic profiles for the Microsoft Office Suite, like Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, or even the STEM focused tools like Blender, AutoCAD, or MATLAB that would have made it feel inclusive and truly universal. Right now, this feels a bit exclusive, and that's why I just can't recommend it yet. But that said, I still love the shape of this mouse. It's about the same weight as the Master 3S. It's perfect for my larger hands. It's just unfortunate that Logitech still doesn't offer a true left-hand version. And of course, the last thing is the price. I mean, at $120, it's not cheap. And right now, you're basically paying a beta premium for a feature that isn't quite ready for the masses. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.